Hi guys, this is Mayurvath. Welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. And this is a very special video because I have an announcement to make. I am starting a video series on design pattern and low level design. So if you don't know what design patterns are, don't worry, stay tuned. In this video, I am going to tell you. But before that, talking about the series. So my next set of videos will be part of this object oriented design series where we are going to discuss about most commonly used uh, and most popular design patterns. We are going to see what each design pattern is, what problem does each design pattern solve, what solution does each design pattern offers us and how can we apply that. We are going to also see the class diagram and basic code on how we can implement that design pattern. Also in this series, I'm going to add many videos where I'm going to solve many low level design interview questions like designing a split wise like build sharing application or designing a book my show like ticket booking application. So if you are interested in such type of content, I would recommend you subscribing my YouTube channel and pressing the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. So let's discuss what are design patterns. Design patterns are reusable pre-made solutions to commonly recurring design problems in object oriented software design. They help to create software designs that are extensible, less complex, easy to understand, maintain and refactor. Design patterns are not the concrete code that we can just copy into our program. They are basically a blueprint or template which explains a solution for solving a particular design problem. We can follow the pattern details and implement a solution specific to our program. Design patterns are general concepts and are independent of the programming language used. Now, design patterns are often confused with algorithms because both basically describe a solution to some known problem. While an algorithm always defines a clear set of steps and order of execution of those steps to solve a problem, a design pattern is more like a blueprint where we just know the idea of how to solve the problem, but there are no defined steps. Whenever we write a code, we want our code to be reusable, extensible and maintainable. Now we all have studied OOPS concepts and they are widely used in software development. But while applying OOPS concepts to create amazing softwares, there are a variety of commonly recurring problems which many of the software engineers face. These problems are basically related to the object creation, how to structure your classes to create a subsystem and how your objects can interact with each other. To solve these recurring problems, software engineers have propose some tried and tested solutions, right? And those solutions are called design patterns. Each design pattern solves a particular design problem. Now by learning design patterns, we can basically learn from the wisdom and knowledge gained by other software developers when they face the same design problem. Now let's see what are three types of design patterns, which basically solves three kind of design problems. Creational design patterns are basically concerned with the way classes are instantiated and objects are created. These design patterns are used when you have a specific requirement while creating objects or a decision needs to be made at the time of instantiation of a class. So we all know that we can create a new object using new keyword in Java or any other programming language. But what is the problem with this single line of code? Here we are hard coding the instantiation of class, which is not a good practice. Based on our requirement, it can happen that at runtime, based on some parameter, we need to make a decision as to instantiate which particular subclass. Here we can use factory design pattern, which is one type of creational design pattern. There can be other design problems related to object creation as well, based on our design requirements. 
In such cases, we must get the help of creational design patterns to provide a more general and flexible approach of creating an object. Structural design patterns are basically concerned with how objects and classes can be composed or assembled together to form a larger structure or subsystem which can offer some additional specific functionality. It basically provides various ways to assemble the classes and also makes sure that the structure is extensible and reusable. Now let's say there are two classes, class A and class B. Class A writes logs in a file. It writes the timestamp, status code, API that is being called and the response time. Class B can plot beautiful graphs and analytical data given input in JSON format. Now for both classes to work together, we need to make both classes compatible by converting the data return in file to JSON format. Here we can use adapter design pattern which will basically make both classes compatible by converting the data. There can be other design problems as well related to class structuring based on our design requirements. In such cases, we must get the help of structural design patterns. Now the third type of design pattern is known as the behavioral design patterns and they are concerned with algorithms and the assignment of responsibilities between objects. It also focuses on how the objects can interact or communicate with each other while still being loosely coupled. I have already created videos on observer pattern and strategy pattern and both belong to behavioral design patterns. You can check out those videos to gain more insights about behavioral design patterns and the problems with strategy pattern and observer pattern solves. Do comment in the comment section what is the next video you want me to make. Also, if you find this video useful and insightful, please like it and share it with your friends. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are interested for more content on design patterns and low-level design.